and then along the columns, along the columns, along the columns, and then two times. You understand? This is the finished product of the entryway, which we did in uh, 18th century panels. One thirty-second of an inch of white gesso, then red clay or red brown clay, and then they sand it off, and it's perfect, and then we start laying the gold. And that's the only thing you can lay real gold in the water because this is water. You know. We did paneling on the walls, paneling on the ceilings, carving twenty chairs by hand versus carving them with a machine like they would do today. They would make one chair, they would make one leg and then they would put it in a machine and they would copy them. And that gives you much more of a reproduction look, whereas when you hand carve everything, you get much closer to, it, to the real look. The carpet was in here. That was the only thing that was actually in here. So I wanted to do the garland. And I picked that up and I put the garland up around the border of the ceiling panel. All of the castings, we had them done in Paris. Uh, and we just basically go by what they have because we were on time limitations. Otherwise, we could have actually carved them and cast them ourselves. We started out by doing pretty much ceiling panels. And the big job of doing these ceiling panels was that we had to we had to fit within the parameters that were already here, which were there were speakers in the ceiling, there were lights in the ceiling, there were sprinklers in the ceiling, and there was already a crumb molding up here. So what we had to do is we had to make everything look seamless without taking down the crumb molding and without messing up the speaker locations nor the light locations. So within that, you had to create a pattern that then carried through and worked out in all sides. We had to laser every single thing that's in this room, and then we had to make everything exact so that all the panels came up and there was no space between molding and ceiling panel. Somewhere 18th century, late 18th century, early 19th century, but um, usually the consoles were never that long. They were always smaller, so everything has to be scaled up. A normal console table at that time, they had one medallion and then the leg right here, and this would have been the entire table that you see right here. That being the table was so long, I had to do two medallions. This table is actually a copy of a French neoclassic table. The challenge of doing this room ceiling was a little greater than the other one because the same restrictions with speakers, molding, lights, fire sprinklers, all that. But then within this, we had to work out two panels because there was going to be two chandeliers in this room versus one in the living room. It's a copy of an 18th century Louis the 16th console. And the console that we copied was a lot smaller, so we had to scale everything differently so that we came up with this three-dimensional carving which is kind of difficult. This piece is uh, very very simple but it's one of my favorites because it's uh, it kind of I, I kind of played around with a table that was you know not quite as large again most consoles, they would be, you know, even the French consoles, they would be maybe two-thirds of this table. So the problem with making furniture that is this is the scaling. Because when people, they make tables like this, and when they make them longer, they tend to make everything bigger, and therefore the carving gets bigger, and therefore everything looks kind of uh, cheap. But all of this stuff here we did, we scaled everything so that, you know, so that it looked right. And I'm, I'm very happy with this table. We did an antique white finish right down here. And then what we did was we did a red-brown clay and then 23 karat gold leaf 
that we then burnished and then we brought it down to, to, to the right level where we wanted it. This table is a copy of a table that was made in Stockholm. And that table was actually painted and gilded, but we kind of, we didn't want to put too much paint and gilding in the house, so what we wound up doing was doing it in walnut and then doing gold leaf detail. It's all hand carved in the style of 1780 to 1800 Stockholm. It's not an empire style where you see the, the uh, griffins and the carving, all you know, the garlands. This is very much empire. The carving is uh, so fine. All of these little flowers, they're about a square centimeter and they're very, very difficult to carve without having them break on the stems and they're carved actually out of one solid. This entire piece is one solid piece of wood. I found the picture in a Sotheby's catalog and it was an Italian piece that was being sold at Sotheby's in London for 250,000 pounds because of the fact that it's a very, very unusual piece of furniture. It's not your, it's not your normal relief carving. Everything is basically carved on solid pieces of wood which makes, which makes the process actually a lot more difficult. But this was a real challenge to scale and to make into a, a little bathroom vanity. We started building everything and this bathroom came out really, really well. Um, it was one of those things where we had, had to put it together very, very quickly. And what we wound up doing was, we wound up doing something with a little bit of an interesting carving on the, on the mirror and on the cabinetry. Uh, not, this is not something that we stole from a book or from history. It was just something that I made up. A bathroom cabinet with the garlands that are traveling around and the ribbons on the inside. All of this carved leaves. Um, all of this is all about this, this whole cabinet. Just, it's just based on fantasy. Really.